Hello, my name is Dr. Sanjay Patel. I'm a consultant in paediatric infectious diseases at Southampton Tr Children's Hospital. And I also lead the Healthier Together programme that's based across Hampshire, the Isle of Wight and Dorset. And it gives me great pleasure to uh, talk to you today about the Healthier Together programme and how it can help support some of the most vulnerable families and young people across Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. Uh, I'm going to start by sharing some uh, some slides that really talk to the challenges we face uh, supporting these families. So I'm going to talk a bit about the impact of deprivation on uh, not just urgent care activity, but also on the rates of illness in children from these families, and then talk about some of the approaches we've developed over the past few years to support families and how it's especially important now to um, ensure that those resources are made accessible and available to families and vulnerable families such as the ones you're supporting. And I'm going to talk a bit about the Healthier Together website and the Healthier Together app, which is uh, a new resource for parents, and then uh, showcase the website itself and the minor illness workshops we've created, which uh, can be delivered by um, by yourselves, by Sure Start staff. There's absolutely no uh, necessity for them to be de delivered by healthcare staff, and actually many reasons why they're going to be valued coming from trusted people such as yourselves. And then we may talk a little bit about the social determinants of health and go beyond common illnesses and talk about um, talk about mental health a little bit vaccinations and other questions you may be asked by these families absolutely appropriately who are struggling to find useful information and a lot of that is on the Healthier Together website. And so these, this is a graph, these are some data about uh, activity, so the, the, the frequency with which children are brought to emergency departments and it's over a 10 year period between 2011 and 2016 on this graph and what you can see is that rates have gone up significantly and that's uh, for children less than one year and that's for children aged one to four years and whilst in the older age groups things have plateaued considerably and so to me that really speaks to ensuring that we deliver sensible messages and increase the confidence of parents uh, especially of uh, who have younger children aged five and under and we know there's a lot of evidence telling us why parents bring their children to see a healthcare professional. It might be a GP, it might be ED, it might be calling 111. And unsurprisingly, it's because they lack the confidence to distinguish a self-limiting illness. So what we'd call a, a minor illness or, uh, or, or a child being poorly to a child being seriously unwell. Uh, but they believe that we can, we being healthcare professionals. And I think the art here is, are we able to um, provide uh, that level of confidence or provide resources that enhance that level of confidence so that they can uh, feel confident that their child is not seriously unwell. Because if we can, the family will not have to travel to the GP or to an ED, or things that are hugely inconvenient for the family and for the child, potentially in the middle of the night, but also potentially costly. But just as importantly, we, we need them to identify the unwell child in a timely fashion, because if they need urgent attention, we don't want them um, staying at home for longer than required. Um, and what parents have really asked for is, is, is clarity about what symptoms and signs to look for and also when and where they should seek help. And that's what we try to do with the Healthier Together programme. You know, it combines parent facing resources. And as you can see from the home page, it's uh, full of imagery. This has been co-designed with parents um, and uh, has a, a information on, on all sorts of things such as common illnesses, on pregnancy, on staying healthy, on, on dental care, etc. But it's also got um, within those pages, those parent facing pages, it's not just text that's offered, but it's also that information is provided via videos in different languages, translations, easy read, and I'll show you some of those bits uh, later on. But in addition to information for parents, it's extremely important that we that healthcare professionals that see these children have a consistent approach. And as all of us know, the delivery of healthcare is extremely complicated. It's done by many different groups of professionals, from GPs to potentially paramedics to pharmacists, health visitors, um, emergency departments, out of hours doctors. Um, and so the programme has worked to develop clinical pathways that can be used by professionals 
irrespective of where they're based. Um, and in addition, we deliver education to all of those professional groups in an attempt to try and ensure that we adopt um, consistent management approaches and consistent messages. And that's because we produced uh, safety netting sheets that professionals provide to families after a consultation, which very much mirror what's on the parent facing bit of the website. Um, and, and, and as I've said, it's so important to maintain that consistent consistency, because if we are inconsistent as healthcare professionals in the messages we um, we give to parents when their child is unwell, then we have very little chance of expecting them to be confident in their own decision making and be able, and feel and confidently keep these children at home. And that process of ensuring that we have consistent similar messages available to parents or the same messages on the parent facing pages, uh, along with the safety netting sheets, really facilitates that concept of shared decision making. And as I said earlier, the, the newest addition to the Healthier Together program is an urgent care app that we've developed. It currently contains resources on common physical health illnesses, but soon to have uh, pregnancy, urgent care resources on there, and soon uh, hopefully mental health resources as well for children and young people. It's been co-designed with parents and GPs, and it takes parents through a red the red, amber, green symptoms. And as we know from surveying parents, it's really that that brings the greatest added value to the resources we, um, we have produced. And so a parent can create a profile for their child that allows the app to know how old the child is. Um, and that in that way, appropriate, age appropriate information and advice will be provided to the family. The, child, the family then for the for the symptom they've got, you know, this one is cough and cold. They'll be taken through the red symptoms. If the child's got any of these features, clearly they're extremely unwell. They have potentially a life threatening illness that needs to be seen extremely quickly in an acute setting. And so they are rapidly signposted to an emergency department and can get information about where their nearest emergency department is. Uh, if they have no red symptoms, they're, they're made to look through a series of amber symptoms for that presentation, once again, coughs and colds. And if they've got any of these, then they don't have a life-threatening illness, but they clearly need to be reviewed by a healthcare professional, ideally in primary care. Um, and so that's the information, that's the advice they're given. For GP practices that have onboarded with the app, and that's about 10% of GP practices so far, we're hoping somewhere between 50 and 70% would have onboarded by September, they have the option to electronically communicate with the family, sending that specific information about what features their child has, along with any additional information via the online consultation tab. And that sends an email directly to the GP practice who will review that the same working day and highly likely to be in, in, in the one or two hours following the, the, the email being sent because it's highlighted as a paediatric healthier together message and then we'll communicate with the family the same day to decide when and where they need to be seen. Uh, and in the absence of uh, the, the family, uh, the, the GP practice having onboarded, or if the family opt to, they can simply call the GP practice. But actually about 70% of children land uh, have no red or amber features, and thus they fall into the green category where the parents are reassured, they're given sensible advice about how to care for the child at home, uh, along with information about what features and symptoms and signs to look out for that would indicate deterioration and an urgent care review either in primary care or ED. And we've surveyed many parents um, about the Healthier Together resources and uh, and they are hugely valued and, and they really value the red, amber, green features because they're just so easy to follow and so clear. But unfortunately, it's not a level playing field across all children. And, and although we've seen those rates of urgent care activity go up, up and up uh, at population level, um, there are some groups that seek urgent care more than others and, and, and often with good reason, but often because those parents lack confidence. So it's a com combination of those two things. And, and we've done some work in Southampton that have shown that the most deprived families, children from the most deprived families, are about 25% more likely to present to a GP or to go to ED than, um, than the, the, the least deprived families, children from those families. But it's not just that those families are 
just presenting to primary care uh, inappropriately. In fact, these children are just more poorly. And we know about the social determinants of health and those social determinants of health mean that children from the most deprived families are more likely to be unwell. And this is shown in this graph here, where uh, children from the most deprived families uh, uh, one and a half, almost twice as likely to present um, to uh, to be admitted to hospital, one and a half times as likely compared to children from the most affluent families. And, and this is probably the most sobering graph of all that children from the uh, that babies, so infants under a year of age from the most deprived families are twice as likely to die in the first year of life than babies born to the most affluent families. And this clearly needs to be addressed in many, many different ways. But one of those ways is from the relationships that you have with those families, those trusted relationships where they're sometimes suspicious of other, other organisations, um, but I hugely, hugely value the input that the voluntary sector has into their, uh, their lives and are likely to um, be receptive to signposting to really clear, sensible resources that may allow them to identify the unwell child more quickly than they would at present. And unfortunately, poverty is increasing in this country uh, on the back of COVID, etc. and inflation. More and more families are finding themselves uh, in those lowest centiles of deprivation. And so we have spent a, uh, we have put a lot of thought and energy into trying to make these accessible these these resources on the Healthier Together website more accessible for the most vulnerable families. And we've done this with Bernardo's through a um, helpline that we've supported uh, that's being used nationally uh, during the course of the pandemic, and that um, provides. Um, support for people whose first language isn't English if their child is unwell with a respiratory condition. And more recently, we've worked with the Institute of Health Visiting, where we have um, had many of the resources on our urgent care parts of the website translated into a number of different languages, as well as the production of videos that I'll show in a moment. And I think the last message from these slides is that although people think that Hampshire is leafy and affluent, that's clearly not the case across the whole of our footprint. And uh, those dark blue areas, which are very much very dark uh, in the large conurbations of Southampton and Portsmouth, as well as on the Isle of Wight, show that there are huge pockets of deprivation and vulnerability and some extraordinary work being done through both Southampton and Portsmouth councils, as well as various voluntary sector organisations. So at this point, I'm going to um, showcase some of the Healthier Together website, um, and that will give you an idea of, um, of, of how it may help you and the families you support when they either ask you about health related topics or um, or about other topics, you know, it could be tantrums in children, it could be potty training, it could be immunizations, it could be mental health concerns that they have about behavior of their children. And this website, through this toolbar here, you'll see it's got information for, during pregnancy, for new parents, for, for parents and carers with young children under three months of age, for parents and carers with children above three months of age, all the way through to 18 years of age, um, for young people, and for professionals. And um, it's laid out with some of those acute illness things right at the top, and then a number of other prevention uh, sources of information um, lower down. There's some clear information about tips on how to use the website that you can go through with parents. And there's information here on accessing it either you know, downloading the app, which is different to the website. It's purely focusing on urgent care, but also adding the icon of the uh, website to a parent's phone. And you can do that, say, with an Android phone extremely easily. You type in Healthier Together into Google and you'll come up with the website. And then you just have to press these three little buttons here and that will allow you to add to home screen. And then it's far more likely that when that, that parent or carer's child is poorly, they'll remember they'll be able to access those resources because they'll already be on their phone. And ideally, they'll, they'll download the app as well. Uh, the other functionality we have here is we have translation of the entire, entire website. So if I if I go to the fever page of, of, of Healthier Together for parents, um, if you click on recite me, recite me through these uh, flags up near the top, you can translate into almost any language. Um, 
available. In addition, for the languages which have this megaphone um, speaker symbol alongside, such as Arabic, uh, you can not only have the, 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 all of the content of each web page translated, but you can also have it spoken out loud, out loud by simply hyperlinking, uh, simply highlighting it with your cursor. So some really useful functionality, especially for families that struggle to read in their native language. We also have this SMS share functionality at the top, which is this green button. And by clicking this and indicating you're not a robot, you can type the, the, the parent or carer's phone number into this box and that will send an, a, a text message with the URL to the page that you're on at the time directly to the parent's phone. That does not come from your mobile phone. It comes from the website and it clearly indicates that this is from Healthier Together. So uh, the other way of downloading the app is through most of our parent facing pages where you've got the icons for downloading and you'll see that we have some introductory text that includes information about different viral illnesses and runny noses and coughs and fever after immunization uh, and information about how to take a temperature, which is hugely helpful. But as I showed you before, the red, amber, green tables are highly valued by parents and uh, we've recently uh, worked with Dr. Ranj to produce a series of videos on some of the pages on some on the fever page and a number of the breathing difficulty pages that talk through the red, amber, green features. So even if people struggle to read written text, Dr. Ranj talks through it. We're also filming videos that sit alongside this in Bengali, Urdu, Gujarati, Punjabi and Polish that will also have doctors in that la those languages speaking through the red, amber, green text. We've translated them to, uh, manually, so with human translators into a number of different languages. And we also have an easy read version of a number of the pages that have far simpler text, but use much more imagery to get the messages about what's features of severe illness, moderate illness and um, mild illness uh, through those easy read pages. Um, we also then give information on how long a child's symptoms are likely to last. And then another video between a health visitor and local general practitioner talking through fever. I mentioned um, parent workshops, and if you click on the resources set toolbar right at the top of the website, you'll be able to access the parent workshops. And these are, are really exciting, and these have been developed with parents. And so they are currently on coughs and colds, diarrhea and vomiting and fever, and they're to facilitate either a one-on-one -on -one discussion or a, a small group workshop with parents essentially discussing uh, various features of illness. There's clear guidance for any facilitator about how to run a session. And most importantly, you know, one has to acknowledge that you are not healthcare professionals. So if there are questions you don't feel you can answer, it, you know, make it absolutely clear you're not a healthcare worker, but that the parent can look at the content on the Healthier Together website for more information and you can do that with them. And that's a really good way of showcasing those resources. But the, the strength of this is that we've developed a series of flashcards with true and false answers um, on those three topics. And parents, rather than being feeling that they're in a teaching session, can just play a game. They've each got a flashcard each and they can ask the question to the group and then the answers on the back. And just that discussion, that facilitated discussion is something parents find hugely valuable. We've actually digitalized those flashcards so that you can, in fact, just through a phone, pass it around and um, have a, a question and then the answer will come up followed by the next question. And so if you're 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 not able to print out those um, print out those flashcards, uh, you can just do it all remotely. And then there's a parent handout that uh, accompanies each of those workshops. And as I showed you before, that can either be sent via a web page directly as a URL to the parent's phone or can be printed out and uh, given to the parents at the end of the session. And that's got information about how to access the website and how to download the app. Um, I mentioned that we have additional resources, so we have resources on um, if one's thinking about the social determinants of health, you know, keep, you know, keeping children um, healthy through what does a healthy day look like, oral health, looking after your teeth, 
all of that contents on there, along with immunizations, um, so childhood vaccinations. Many of you are probably asked about, by parents about whether vaccines are safe, and there's a, a huge amount of very clear information about immunizations, which ones children should have, uh, whether why they should be getting the, the flu vaccine if they're over two years of age or, or preschool, um, the MMR vaccine, and then frequently asked questions about um, vaccinations. Um, so I hope that um, you have found this helpful. More importantly, I hope that you find the Healthier Together resources helpful for you when you ask questions by families that you're supporting and that through those questions from families, you're able to showcase the content of the Healthier Together website and then ideally get them to uh, add the icon to their home screen of their phone and to download the app. And I think this will mean that when a parent is next faced with an unwell child or with questions they have about tantrums or immunizations, this will be their first port of call. Thank you very much for your time.